YouTube, two platforms, twice the food, all the enjoyment. You let me know when we're live over there. This is live. What up, homies? Art and I are live in effect. Here's the deal. We're like, we crushed two videos earlier with Desi. You can see a sneak peek of those on Instagram stories if you want. First, we did um, brownies. We made Desi's chocolate date brownies, the ones we did on stories, Instagram stories the other night. Absolutely delicious. Then we doubled down, right? Like double down, keeper. We did Desi's broccoli and kale Trader Joe's crust pizza. But we did it better than Trader Joe's because if you look at the back of the ingredients on Trader Joe's, it's loaded with corn flour, corn starch, potato starch. One of the last ingredients is kale. So it's like super, super low on the totem pole. Um, we did it where there was no starch. So it was keto and no dairy. And it was crispy as can be, right Art? It was a delicious pizza, but now I wanna pop on. I wanna make a recipe from the cookbook, right? We are T minus seven days exactly till keto meal prep by Flav City rocks the house. You guys on YouTube have been crushing it. You guys on Instagram have been crushing it too. Um, and we're gonna make this recipe right here. A delicious cauliflower fried rice with Chinese five spice, to, uh, spice, Chinese five spice crusted chicken thighs. Look at that, you guys. So it's a, one of the meal prep recipes. There's 125 low carb recipes in this book. You guys have been ordering it like crazy, so thank you for that. Instagram's been supporting the book. It's been a number one new release now for three weeks. Now the next step is to make it a number one new release, which I know we can do by spreading the love. But do me a favor, put this in the back of your mind, you guys. As soon as you get this book in the mail, leave a review on Amazon. My publisher just told me Amazon loves reviews. That to them is like an internal sign the book is doing well and they'll push it to more people. So as soon as you get this in the mail next week, hopefully at next Friday at the latest, go on Amazon, leave an honest review, and the more reviews we get, the more it's gonna be pushed to other people. So let's make this. It's a really, really yummy, low carb cauliflower rice, fried rice with vegetables, tons of eggs, and then boneless, skinless chicken thighs that are spiced in Chinese five spice. Super easy. It's done meal prep. And then Art, if you look on the book right here, we have the dietary restrictions. It is a meal prep. It is dairy free. It is nut free. And just like all recipes in the book, detailed macros. Macros per serving of fried rice, macros per serving of chicken. So we got 178 people right now on YouTube. How many on Instagram? Take a peek, Art. Leave a comment down below. Let us know where you're watching from and let us know what you're having for dinner. We got 76 people on Instagram. All right, everyone click share. Share this to your Instagram feed, your uh, stories. Let's get more people on here because we're spreading the low carb love and we're sharing recipes from the cookbook. So I think we should get started, right Art? I think so. All right, let's do it, homie. All right. Uh, Let's start by making the marinade for the chicken. So the reason why I love this chicken marinade is it's one ingredient, Chinese five spice. You can buy this at most grocery stores. I prefer to buy it, you guys, at the spice shop because it's fresher. We got SoCal granny preppers in the house. Uh, we got New Brunswick, Canada, my little bunny girls over there. Big D Dallas is in the house. Just made cauliflower fried rice two nights ago because of you, says Cucamonga Chris. That's my homie. We got LA here. We got Florida. Can't wait to hold that book in my hand, says D. Uh, Madison. Oh, Holly, what up, Holly? Shar from Michigan's in the house. Elena says she can't believe you are doing this live. I'm actually making this tonight and just watch the original video. Bizarro world. It's like the nexus of the world, first and first, right, Art? <laughs> so, universe. of the universe. So let's season our chicken here with a generous pinch of unrefined real salt. My buddy's over in Redmond, Utah, makes some really good salt. And then the five spice. I wonder if any of your fans are watching on both platforms at the same time. That, is anyone watching on Instagram and YouTube at the same time? So we got the Instagram camera right there, the YouTube camera here. I've got comments right here. I can't see the comments of Instagram, guys, I'm sorry. I can only do so many things at one time. Now. I'm gonna see if I can remember all five spices from the spice rub. So Chinese five spice, if memory serves me correct, is Szechuan peppercorns, cinnamon, cloves, uh, fennel, and, oh, I know this. Cardamom? No, I don't think it's cardamom, hold on. Szechuan peppercorns, fennel, cloves, cinnamon, 
Oh, it's I always forget the last one. Someone tell me what the last one is. I forgot. Somebody Google it. So let's season both sides here with salt and spice rub. And then I have a question for you guys. Do I want to cook these straight out of the fridge cold? Or do I want to let them sit at room temperature for 15, 20 minutes and let them get the chill off there? Tell me why. Why do I want to do that? So in the cookbook, we have a ton of chicken thigh recipes, chicken breast recipes. We have pork chops. We have lamb. We have seafood. We have turkey. We have a whole uh, chapter about veggies called Mama Said Eat Your Veggies. So we really have something for everyone. So many of you guys have pre-ordered the book, and I can't wait for you guys to get it. Um, if you haven't ordered the book yet, use the link down in the description box. Or if you're on Instagram, just search Flav City on Amazon. If you live in another country, it's shipping to like many, many different countries. Don't use my link in the description box. Instead, search Flav City on your browser. The beauty of this book is that it's not like you're on a diet. You just think of it as clean eating recipes that actually taste good. I see food and I eat it. That's what I do, right? Because you're going to eat healthy, delicious recipes like that that don't make you feel like you're dieting. I mean, shrimp burgers on keto fat bread sesame buns with secret sauce. Oh, Desi's feed me some shrimpy. Look at that. Spice crusted shrimp with coconut cauliflower curry. I mean, that's the kind of stuff we can expect in this book. So we're super, super excited for you to see it. Oh, let's see. We got it. Room temperature says KZ. Spicy Sapphire says temperature. Amy says temperature. Uh, says star anise. Star, oh, is that it? I think you're right. It is star anise, Szechuan peppercorn, cloves, fennel, and cinnamon. That could be it. Thank you so much. You got it. Lolly says, let it sit at room temperature. It won't chill the frying oil. Exactly. If you put cold chicken into a hot pan, it lowers the temperature of that pan. It lowers the oil temperature. Instead of frying, or more importantly, getting crusty, it actually just kind of boils in its juices. It's gross. So just push it aside. And that's why I like buying this five spice because it's five spices for the price of one. And I love it. Now let's start prepping our fried rice. I have a large nonstick pan here. I'm going to preheat over medium low heat. This is my cast iron pan for my chicky chicky wawa. And I think we're going to start with onions, broccoli. So look at this assortment of veggies we have here, you guys. I'm going to put asparagus in there because they're so in season now and they're fat. Some snow peas, some broccoli, chopping broccoli, some red cabbage, some onions, some garlic, some green onions, some soft scrambled pasture raised eggs. Yummy, yummy, yummy. If you live in Chicago, get this brand from Indiana. It's great. Book tour, please. Fort Lauderdale says show it. So it's in the talks. If this becomes a number one bestseller, book tour for sure. But we need your your support, right? Right now we're doing one Chicago book signing. We'll do a second one. Um, but spread the word. I know many of you guys have ordered copies. You've ordered two, three, eight copies. Some girl ordered last week. If you know someone who needs this kind of book in your life, spread the love because if we can make it a number one bestseller, book tour all around, today's show, Al Roker, all that stuff. So YouTube, tell my friends over on Instagram, spread the love because that's how we're going to do it, right? That's what I'm talking. Yeah, book tour in Miami. Amy, can't wait for the book. Uh, show that's waiting for it. Where is your book signing? Um, there's one in Chicago that it's sold out, but also we are going to do a uh, signed autograph copy shipped directly to you. By the end of the month, we'll have the uh, inventory and a Shopify store to send direct copies to you that are signed. Um, and then we're going to do a second book signing in Chicago because the first one sold 250 free tickets in 24 hours. So pretty cool. Good things are happening, you guys, but I think it's just the beginning of some really, really cool stuff. Onion. All right, this is how we cut an onion. We take a sharp knife. We go across the onion like this. We call that making planks. We keep our fingers perched on top like a three-eyed raven in Game of Thrones. Then we turn it to the side. Art doesn't know what I'm talking about because he hasn't seen the show. You believe that? We keep our fingers tucked back. We make sticks like this. The reason we do this is that it makes dicing the onion super easy when I do the last cut like that. All of a sudden, you have a fine dice without having to chase the onions all over the cutting board. So you can pretty much use any keto veggies you want for this recipe. Just keep in mind cooking time. Start with the veggies that take the longest, which would be 
broccoli, and onions. Then do the ones at the end, like red cabbage, that take no time at all. In the cookbook, I don't use asparagus, but it's springtime. And when you find big fat asparagus on sale at the store, you use them. It's that simple, right? I'm going to be doing a relatively high cooking temperature and I'm going to be wanting no flavor in my oil. So knowing that, what kind of oil should I use for my stir fry? Comments down below. 271 people on YouTube. Hello, family. Let's get some more people on here. We're making cookbook recipes. Share the link over on Facebook, Instagram. Get some more party people over here and bookmark tomorrow at five o'clock. Art, sound good? Five o'clock tomorrow, we're going live again, making more recipes from the cookbook. So put a reminder on your phone right now. Oh, dude, I love the sound of that. Vegas book signing. Dude, knock on wood, that's going to happen. We can get like one of the hotels to sponsor it. And we can do like a takeover. We'll do a Bobby Flay City takeover of Bobby Flay's restaurant in Vegas. How funny would that be? <laughs> pretty, pretty good. All right, so onions chopped. Hi, from Cambridge, England. Off to check Amazon. That's my homie. We're shipping to England. We're shipping to Deutschland. We're shipping to Australia, Singapore, Brazil. If you're in those countries, search Flav City on Amazon. Don't use my cookbook link down in the description box. We also got to get the organic broccoli started because it's hearty. Hefty, hefty, hefty. Right, Art? That's the second time I've used that reference today. I've never, I've never used it that much. So I want to cut the broccoli on the smaller side because I don't want it to stay raw. And I want it to kind of blend in with my rice a little bit. Kind of make it like a Kali broccoli rice. Ooh, this cookbook is worthy of William Sonoma. If you talk to them, it would be cool to tour with them and their stores to cook something. Dougie, Dougie Fresh. Dougie's my new ma uh, manager. So the word on the street, y'all, is that Costco's like this close to ordering the book. Knock on wood. Uh, Sam's Club is very close to ordering too. And then... We can only hope for a William Sonoma and then do a tour, but we got to start somewhere. And so if we can start big like Costco, and then I'm going to ask you all, not yet, but when the book comes out to light up, just blitz Al Roker's Instagram account and tell him he's got to have us on because Al Roker's keto, right? He's going to love these recipes. Absolutely love them. What do they say about the oil here? Avocado oil says Dennis says Ronell. Very smart. Paravox Hopeful Lisa Avocado Oil because it's a neutral flavored oil that has a very high smoke point. Exactly what we want. Do we want to use olive oil? Well, no, it's got a flavor. Do I want to use ghee? You could, right? You always, want to use you always want to use it. It's fatty and delicious. So let's get these in the pan because they take a little bit of time to cook down. Where's my bench scrape bowl? Bench scrape bowl, where are you? There we go. <laughs> Turning into uh, Adam Sandler here. Bench, bench scraper? Ah. Which is more important, the bench scraper or the knife? <laughs> so that'll go in. And then even though, uh, even though I'm going to add a little bit of tamari and stuff oh, whoops, <laughs> later on, I do want to salt it a little bit just to get it going, just to get the cooking process going and coax out the water. So this is going to be a veggie-centric fried rice. And it's so good that you won't even care that it's cauliflower rice, okay? I've tricked many a people, including Johnny P, my dad. He's old. It doesn't really count as much into thinking this is rice. Let me push this out of the way. I'm making a mess in the kitchen as usual. Um, the key is to grate your own cauliflower rice. So check it out. Before we started, I used my food processor and I riced one large head of organic cauliflower. Art, why do we never use frozen cauliflower rice when we're making fried rice or pilaf? It's too watery. It's too watery. What happens when you freeze vegetables? Ice crystals form. Thank you, Art. And what happens to those ice crystals? They tear down those cell walls. Tear down those cell walls. Exactly. Oh, we should have said that in the video. Mr. And, Gorbachev. And Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that cauliflower wall. So <laughs> So that's so lame, yes. That's what we do all day, you guys. Come on, it's been a long day. We've been working since like 10 o'clock this morning. But that's what it does. So when you thaw out the vegetables, 
They're as soft and watery as can be. When you're making cauliflower crust pizza like we just did, great. When you're making a pilaf or a fried rice, bad news. Bad news, Mr. Gorbachev. So that's why we're doing this. I'm all over the place. Man. Yeah, that was not Reagan. That was terrible. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's an, oh, Faith has such a good eye. Is this a new frying pan? It's a new version of the old one I got because the old one got so scraped up and Desi said, I don't want that crap in the house anymore. It's $35 on Amazon and it has a nice shiny new finish. Search Tramantina 12 inch nonstick pan or just use my Amazon link on flavecity.com slash shop. So a little bit of salt just to coax out the uh, water. Um, and then let's prep the rest of our ingredients here for the fried rice. If you haven't done so yet, por favor, leave a comment down below. Let us know where you're watching from. What made you go keto? We are keto paleo because we tested intolerant for a lot of things like starches and gluten, and it makes us feel good. Look at this art. This is feel good food. It's not food that's gonna make you feel bloated, gassy, fat, um, inflammation. This is all low carb. This is beef lettuce wraps with low carb ramen. This is pesto pasta with shirataki noodles and spice crusted chicken thighs with a pecan and parsley pesto. And this is a three hour braised beef, veal, and pork ragu bolognese with shirataki fettuccine noodles and a arugula salad. So this is the kind of food you guys you want to eat when you're on keto paleo. And this recipe is a meal prep. It's nut free and it's egg free. I tell you if there's a recipe on YouTube for it, I give you tips. But more importantly, if you're tracking your macros, look at this. You get macros per serving of salad and per serving of pasta with sauce. We broke down everything for you because we want you to have the tools to be the best cook you can and feel like you're not dieting. This is not a diet book. It's a lifestyle book that'll make you feel like you're eating tasty, flavorful food that happens to be really good for you. So once again, if you haven't ordered the book, what are you waiting for? On Instagram, search Flav City on, you on Amazon. YouTube, leave the Amazon link down below, click it. Head over there, if you live abroad, just search Amazon Flav City. Super, super easy. Here's a question that comes up a lot. Are all keto recipes gluten-free? Yes. 100% of keto recipes are gluten-free. We also do keto a little differently. We don't do heavy dairy keto, so you're not going to find like really fatty, cheesy um, keto recipes. And we don't do super high-fat keto either. We do moderate fat, lower carb. At home, we only eat gluten-free, and we eat low cheese, except when we just made the broccoli, kale, Trader Joe's uh, crust pizza with lots of cheese on top. Thank you, sexy sky doll. I'm the best, and I love that name. Do you have any healthier Instant Pot in your new cookbook? Mm-hmm. We have a number of recipes that are Instant Pot. Let me show you one. This is like, it's so sexy, it's crazy. Let me see if I can find the pork. So we made, there we go. It's Instant Pot Pulled Pork Sliders. Here, look at this. Instant Pot Pulled Pork Sliders with homemade keto barbecue sauce, Cheddar Bay Red Lobster Biscuits, and Red Cabbage Crunch Slaw. Tell me you don't want to eat that, and why would you even know or care that that is low carb, keto, and paleo if you don't put cheese in the biscuit? You don't care. I don't want to eat that. Yeah. <laughs> and look at this, Art. I gave you the macros per biscuit, per serving of slaw, and per serving of pulled pork. So we thought of everything because you guys requested this book. It's a book for you guys, by you guys, all that good stuff. Uh, let's see what else here. So I'm gonna add my snow peas now. So we said no to two different book deals over the last two years. We found a publisher we loved. We kept getting requests from you guys for a book. We just thought it was time and keto is blowing up right now. And there's so many keto books on the market that are just taking advantage of the trend. And I want people who are looking for low carb keto recipes to find a book they can use every day and someone that they can rely on. That's why I put Desi and I on the cover because you're invested in us. It's not an impersonal thing. That's why every single recipe in the book has a photo. Look at that shakshuka 
with cheesy low carb pita bread. I want you to see the food you're gonna eat. So every, oh my God, who doesn't wanna eat that? Every recipe has photos. Every recipe has macros. And I want you to realize this is my favorite recipe in the book right here. Moroccan chicken stew with golden cauliflower rice. Look at this, you guys. I want you to know that this book will be your guide to clean eating without sacrificing flavor. We're not, taking, we're not making a book just to capitalize on keto right now. We're doing it because the need is out there and we want to supply a book that can actually be used. I looked for your book at Costco and I didn't have it. Well, the book's not out yet, Gabby. The book will be out on May 15th. We're waiting on, knock on wood, the Costco order. I heard they're very close to ordering a huge number of books. So send them emails, send them tweets, send them messages. Hey, can you please carry the Flav City book? Because if they order it, then like Target's going to order it, Sam's Club is going to order it, all that stuff. But the book's out next week on this day. And then hopefully Costco will be right after that. And then Art and I and Desi will do uh, meetups at Costco. Not that Art knew that, but now he does, right Art? <laughs> okay, so veggies are getting happy, right? Just taking the raw edge off of the brocks. Now we got these snow peas in there. Now, why am I waiting on the garlic? Why don't I just throw the garlic in there now in the beginning and just be done with it, right? Someone tell me why while I chop it. Kookabanga, I will definitely get your cookbook. Hey, oh, Sophie pre-ordered six weeks ago. My girl. Is keto diet good for low sugar level for diabetic type 2? It's amazing for type 2 diabetics. So is the paleo diet. You will see your levels go down. You will take your medication and start weaning off of it. If you can stick to a paleo keto diet, you will get off of your medications. And as Wilford Brimley used to say back in the day, that diabetes is going to go away. I know it's a big claim, but it's true. Because when you eat starches and stuff, it's very inflammatory. And it's bad news because it spikes your blood sugar and your diabetes goes through the roof. You okay there, Art? <laughs> just kind of... Somebody just said the video sucks. It's probably because I'm like one-handed and I'm trying to... There you go. There you go. Okay. Like screwing up. No one says the video sucks. Well, somebody said your video moves like crazy. Yeah, because I got one hand right now. Yeah, Art's, come on. Art's like multitasking. Let's cut him a break. Now he can sit down. The horse has to get off his feet once in a while. The garlic were burned. Nancy, my girl. High five. You got it. So garlic doesn't get better. You got it, Vanessa. Yes, Scott, it's the best for type 2 diabetics. It's unbelievable. Granny Pepper, you got to get on there. You got to get on there big time. Samantha can smell it. Can you smell la 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 what the Bob is cooking? So, what else do I want to do? Before I get the rice in there, I have to scramble eggs. Raise your hand, y'all, if you love a soft scramble egg in your fried rice. Because for me, that's what it's all about. It's not a fried rice, it doesn't have Exactly. And most recipes call for one or two. I do three or four. And I like a little bit of color in there. Unfortunately, red cabbage is a little higher in carbs, so you can use green. But for the recipe in the book, I just did like literally a third of a cup. I'm doing a little more now. But the recipe in the book makes uh, five servings of meal prep for the week. So over half the recipes in the book are meal prep, so five servings. The other half are individual recipes. So let me consult my recipe, make sure I'm doing this right. Page 69, dude. Okay, so let's read it together, Art. So I did the onion, broccoli, snow peas, cabbage went in, garlic's in. Oh, I need to put ginger in, thank you. And then we'll go eggs, and then we'll add the cauliflower rice. So ginger, we'll take here, this guy, and we'll take my veggie peeler that I used earlier, and we'll just peel it up. If you use really fresh young ginger, you actually don't have to peel it, but I don't have access to that. The reason why we also do ginger right around the same time as the garlic is because it'll burn. But this stuff is so aromatic. Can you smell that, guys? Brittany, open your nose right there. Remind her when the book Oh, Brittany, yeah. Brittany, this, this launches. The ginger launches. The book is launching one week from today. May 15. So use my Amazon link in the description box, place your pre-order now, and spread the word to friends who need a clean eating, 
cookbook in their life that actually tastes good. If you're on Amazon, just search Flav City. Um, on Amazon, if you're in another country, search Flav City. It's shipping all around the world. Statues crumble for me. We are on a simulcast. Yeah, we're on a simulcast. How many people are on Instagram right now? 80. 80. Guys, I'm sorry I can't see your comments right now. I could only do so many things at one time, but I wanted to pop on with you guys so you can see too. All right, read a comment to me over there. Where do you get your salt? Oh, we get our salt from Redmond, Utah. This is called a Redmond Real Salt. It's pure, unrefined salt. It has 70 minerals in there. Search Redmond Kosher Real Salt on, on uh, Amazon. Buy that. Actually, if you go to the Flav City Cookbook on Amazon, it says people also bought... And it suggests that, and it suggests my bench scraper, and it suggests this. The algorithm is scary, dude. It like knows me so well. It's, dude, Skynet. They know. It's the weirdest thing. Where can they order your book in China? Ooh, man, so China. Chinese, Amazon? Well, you can get digital copies on iTunes, Apple Books, and uh, Kindle. So s try to find the book on a Kindle version or... Um, you can't pre-order on Apple iBooks, I think. you got to wait until May 15. But I'd like to think we're available in China. Um, but never use kosher salt and table salt that's been refined because it is stripped of all its minerals and it's bleached and processed and it's not very good. So we add the ginger now so it doesn't burn. And then, I wish you could smell this. Look at that. Craner, get your, get your pie hole in there. I mean, that's just like, look at the color. Look, look at the book. Right now it's looking the same, right, Art? We got it matched up to the book so far pretty well. Where's the chicken? The chicken's coming soon, don't worry. Um, in addition, you guys, to the book launching uh, uh, next week, by the end of the month, we're going to have signed copies that ship directly from our house going to you guys. We'll have a Shopify page linked to our website. Don't worry about it yet. As soon as it's available, I'll let you guys know. We're going to ship around the world and we're going to have signed copies for me, Desi, Art, even Johnny P. If Johnny P is over and you get a signed copy from Johnny, that's like limited edition, right? So we're going to have limited quantities in the, in the beginning, but if we get a lot of orders, we'll get some more. So that'd be cool to send signed copies to Flav City people around the world. That's going to be badass. I'm going to start preheating the cast iron pan, Art. Speaking of the chicken... All around the world, statues crumble for art. What, the Sugar Ray? The Sugar Ray, dude. I was doing B.I.G. Oh, you in B.I.G.? Y'all remember Sugar Ray, that song from the 90s? That was crazy for Cocoa Puffs. Oh, also I want to do asparagus. So let's do this. I want to do something different with the asparagus. Instead of chopping it, check this out, Art. <laughs> I want to shave it like this. I want to get ribbons of asparagus in my fried rice. Oh, it's not. We just make that up, of course. What? Do we ever like do things by the book around here, Art? Probably not. No. So I'm just going to get some ribbons here and then chop the rest because I think it's fun. I'm a fun guy too, right, Art? <laughs> uh, reminds me of like, almost like Kramer. I'm taking liberties. with like, yeah, you're, you know, when he's doing the photo shoot with George. You're like a strong guy, but I can't tell with that shirt on. You're a lover boy! So let's just shave some. Somebody and asked, why do you call it asparagus? Because I'm silly. That's why. When we did the asparagus video with Art last month, I'm like, what's the plural of asparagus? And I knew it was asparagus, but I'm like, maybe it's asparagus. Does, uh, does Nasoya make a fusilli pasta? No, uh, no Nasoya only makes spaghetti and fettuccine. But the pasta recipes in the cookbook are bomb.com. So let's get these in here, and then we can add the soft scrambled pasture-raised eggs. Raw asparagus is delicious. Once you shave away that tough outer skin, it's fantastic. Candace says between her friends and family, they bought 20 books. Are you serious, Candace? High five, Candace. Woo-hoo! You rock, Candace. That's what I love. And I want you to also think about other people in your life who are struggling with eating and diet, or maybe they're interested in keto. Buy them a copy because they're going to they're gonna get in the kitchen and fall in love with cooking again. It's not the kind of cookbook that sits on your shelf. It's the kind that gets dirty from use, okay? Because I call it flippability. 
This book has a flippability factor of 9.8 out of 10. Because when you pick up a cookbook, sometimes you don't get excited by the pictures, but art. If you pick up a cookbook like this and you're like, flip. Oh, wow. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to flip. Whoa, that's really good. Crusty lamb chops, Mediterranean Greek salad. Whoa, I can eat that. Oh my, wait, I can eat that on keto. I can eat that on keto. I can eat that on... The flippability is amazing because every stinking recipe has a photo and it makes you stop and say, whoa, game has been changed. Turkey meatloaf, sugar-free glaze, rice pilaf. The game has literally been changed. I don't think in my research there is a cookbook out there like this. And I did a lot of research and that's why we made this book. So flippability factor is a 9.8 out of 10. A flip it to the flip it to the... <laughs> And it, it would be a 10 out of 10, but that darn Russian judge gave us a low score, so it lowered our flippability, right? Eggs. Check this out, Art. This is my favorite brand. If you live in Chicago, go to the Big Whole Foods on Ashland. Pasture raised. These are better than Vital Farms. These chickens have 208 square feet to themselves, non-GMO, and they're only $4.99 a dozen. Instagram. You guys know I love these. I put them on my story all the time. These are the bomb. Art, how many eggs? Actually, no, you guys tell me. For this amount of veggies, and don't, don't forget, we still got to add a bunch of cauliflower rice. For this amount of veggies, how many eggs should I add? It's totally up to you guys. Don't go crazy. Yeah, no, don't say a couple dozen. No, we ain't doing that. Give me an honest opinion, and Art's going to choose his favorite answer. Well, I think I'm heavily influenced by the fact that the first two people all give the same number. But... Okay, we got Four, four, three, six. Chris, you are Cucamongo. Aha says five. Four seems like a good number. Four. The whole carton. The whole carton. <laughs> I have a second carton in the fridge too. Wow. Intr oh, by the way, I got 368 people watching. Congratulations. That's awesome. 372. All right. Wow. All right, you pick the number from all those. How many is it going to be? Four seems like a good number. Four score? All right, four score. We're going to do four eggs, but I want you to see the color. This is a pasture-raised egg. See the beautiful bright yellow yolk or orange yolk? You don't get that with factory farmed eggs. You only get that nice orange color with pasture-raised eggs that are outside from morning till night, eating bugs and worms and grass and only have a supplemental feed of non-GMO corn and soy. Okay? Uh, yeah, I have one bar left on the bottom one. Okay. Is that for me or? The TX, which one is that? TX is you. Okay. So worst comes to worst, we can swap that out. Yeah. If you guys ever hear the audio goes down, just uh, let me know. Yeah, let me stop Where can you get these? Whole Foods. How do you crack an egg with so much ease? Are you kidding me? Boom. Bah. I'm, I'm killing those eggs, baby. I'm crushing them like nobody's business. Sounds like an oompa loompa just now. <laughs> oompa loompa doopity doo. I see an egg and I crush it like poo. <laughs> oh my God. Come on, you guys. Come on. Oh my gosh. How much, uh, a dozen of these eggs is $5 at, at a Whole Foods. Amazing deal. Vital Farms for the same ones are six fifty. <laughs> hey, it's been a long day. It's been a long day. This is why I love live streams. They're the most fun. Ha ha ha! Are you blowing? Okay. So we're gonna whip up those eggs. I'm gonna do it over the sink because I have a feeling I'm gonna spill a few. Yeah, everyone, if you're watching on Instagram, say hi to YouTube. Everyone say hi. I know a lot of you guys don't cross platforms, but I want you to know the family members over there. Kelly says, my egg video changed the way she buy eggs. Thank you, Kelly. That's why we made it. Hey, tomorrow we're doing a video all about yogurt. Art and I are going to the grocery store and telling you what kind of yogurt to buy, what kind to avoid. Spoiler alert, only buy organic, grass-fed, plain Greek-style yogurt. Stay away from stuff like Danon, Yoplait, and Activia. It is garbage. Ah, oh, let's see here. Okay, all right, come back here. Make a well in the center of the pan. And then add the eggs, excuse me. 
and then we'll start scrambling them. In the meantime, I'm going to turn the heat up on my pan back here for the chicken. So we're just going to soft scramble them. As soon as these eggs come together a little bit, then we're going to add the cauliflower. If you haven't done so yet, Instagram and YouTube, leave a comment down below. Let us know where you're watching from, what you're making for dinner. Set a reminder for tomorrow, 5 o'clock Chicago time, which is CST, CBT, sorry, CDT, because <laughs> um, we're coming live again on YouTube tomorrow, making more recipes from the cookbook. Uh, so set a reminder for that. This weekend on YouTube, we're doing a video for a copycat version of Trader Joe's broccoli and kale crust. Our version is paleo, grain-free, dairy-free. Amazing. And then Sunday or Saturday, we're going to do the yogurt video. So eggs are coming together nicely. You don't stop stirring, Art. We keep stirring because we want to break up those egg curds and to make this a soft, silky scrambled eggs. If you let it go over high heat by itself, you get large curds of eggs, and then it gets clumpy. So now, Art, right, check it out. It's kind of coming together. I can bring it all in, and I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to get as much of this cauliflower arroz in here as possible. Let's see. This is going to be a super veggie loaded rice. So like imagine packing in all these nutritious veggies into your diet, but it tastes like fried rice. So like if you have picky eaters, this is picky eater approved. When I get comments from you guys that your picky son, daughter, husband, wife eats my food, it's the biggest compliment I can get because they're getting a ton of vegetables. They don't even know it though, right? So let me, I'm going to do this over here. All right. Just want to shake up my pan a little bit. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I, I don't want to live dangerously because Art and I have to clean this up. But look, all of a sudden it's like boom shakalaka. We got major color. Now I have to go get my arsenal of spices. First of all, give me some, give me some hearts. Give me some, some thumbs up. Let me show you guys on Instagram really quick what's going on here. Check it out. This is what's going on in the pan here. Our Costco free range eggs okay. What do we think, Art? Are Costco free-range eggs okay? You can do better. You can do way better. They are not good at all. Free-range doesn't mean anything, you guys. It's a marketing gimmick. Even the Costco uh, pasture-raised eggs are not good. So, Art, come over here real quick. Do you cook your cauliflower for rice first, or is that raw? No, raw. Don't cook it and don't buy frozen because it's too soggy. I'm going to use organic tamari sauce. I'm going to use sriracha or sambal olic, and I'm going to grab some toasted sesame oil out of the fridge. These are my holy trinity of Asian sauces that I always tell you to have in the cookbook. So, Art, let's reach in the fridge here. It's okay. <laughs> now, if you wanted to make this paleo, you would use coconut amino acids. The reason I don't like coconut aminos is they don't have that salty-ish umami flavor. The reason why I use tamari instead of soy sauce is because it's gluten-free, it has no wheat in there but it still has that fermented soy salty flavor that I love. That's why I don't like aminos, and aminos are expensive. So, this is a total season and adjust as you go kind of dish. I tell you the initial quantities to use in the book, then you adjust it according to your likes. So probably about a tablespoon and a half of tamari, a teaspoon and a half of sriracha, and toasted sesame oil, you guys, is super strong stuff. Try to keep it in the fridge. Uh, you keep this in the fridge because it's a volatile fat that goes rancid over time. And if you don't keep it in the fridge, it's going to go rancid much quicker. After you open it, it has to go in there. And I hope I have another one because we're all out. So once again, we come back to the designated safe area. We toss. We toss. We toss. <laughs> we toss. Pretty good, huh, Art? Good. Not, really, <laughs> not really spilling too much. Now look, all of a sudden... Our rice took on that color of soy like we know and love. In the meantime, Art, let's start cooking our chicken. Avocado oil in the pan. Amazing pan skills. Th Schmitz. Oh, thank you, my friend. Shake and toss. Shake and toss. That's right. I mean, I feel pretty confident about it, but when you got a pan that loaded, I don't feel ballsy enough to do it over the stove, okay? Because guess what? My man Art and I are cleaning this up afterwards. So... 
let's see our chicken here. Check it out, Instagram. Our chicken's been sitting for 20 minutes at room temperature. In that meantime, the salt has brought some moisture to the surface. It got to know that Chinese five spice. It went back into the chicken and we have a quick and easy marination station. 422 people watching on YouTube. Our record is 470. Guys, share this video on YouTube. Put it to your Instagram wall, your Facebook wall, your story. Let's get some more people on here because we can't stop me now. I'm having such a good time. All right. If the chicken doesn't make that sizzle sizzle, you get it out of the pan. That means your pan's not hot enough. So we put it in. And then because I just put a bunch in, I raise the heat even more. And then if you don't have one of these by now, I feel like I haven't done my job, right? I've been telling you, get a splatter guard and make life easier. Now we're gonna let those chicken thighs cook for about five minutes undisturbed. Art, why do we leave them undisturbed? We're all about the crust. We're all about that crusty crust, hashtag team crust. And if you start playing with this now, you're gonna mess around with that crust. So what I'm gonna actually do, Art, I'm gonna swap burners here. And I'm gonna keep these over here. And this prevents the oil from going everywhere. Now I have to check this rice and see how it's seasoned. I mean, it looks gorgeous. And that cauliflower rice has soaked up a lot of the flavor of these sauces we put in there. Wow. I nailed it. It's salty, nutty, and spicy. That's it, it's done. I do wanna cook it another minute. In the meantime, Art, come over here. Let's get our garnishes ready. I have some organic green onions. I'm just gonna finely slice these. You can use cilantro if you wanted to. And then we'll put some sesame seeds. I think I only have black sesame seeds right now. You okay with that, Art? I'm fine with it. If Art's cool with it, we're all cool with it. Tuck, see my fingers right now? They're tucked back, so I can't cut them. Look, see, I'm grazing my fingers. And then once I do a couple more cuts like this, then I quickly take my fingers, push them back, while the knife is moving. So it's always moving back, but never in risk of getting cut off. That's how we safely, we take the knife like this. We don't hold it like that. We don't hold it like this. We take the knife around the neck. We wrap our fingers around and we rock. We don't go like that. Rock the casbah. We rock the casbah. We don't use the front of the knife. We use the back. See, if you use the front of the knife, look, it doesn't cut. If you use the back of the knife, it cuts through really, really easily. See? Super easy. Let's take a big handful of this. Let's add it to our cauliflower rice. Uh, let's see. Let's double check our recipe in the book, everyone. All right, let's see. Oh, green onions, sesame seeds, and we're done. All right, we got everything. So check this out. Per serving, you guys. Let's see. Instagram can see this. Come over here, Art. Okay, so per serving of fried rice, 146 calories, 10.7 grams of net carbs, 16.9 total, 6.2 fat, 8.2, 8.7 protein, 6.1 fiber. Per chicken thigh, 160 calories, zero carbs, eight grams of fat, 24 grams of protein. Super clean. Super clean eating that if you did this with starchy white rice, the carb count would be off the chart. It would spike your blood sugar. And next thing you know, you have diabetes and insulin issues. It's just, a, it's a problem. All right, one more. Shake it, shake it off. And this, guys, is done. So just to finish this, I want to go into my spice pantry here and grab these guys. I wish I had the white sesame seeds, but right now I just have these black ones. And they kind of look cool. Check it out, Art. When you garnish like that, it's kind of fun. It's fun, and I'm a fun guy, so it makes sense, right, Art? <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> All right, can't wait to try your avocado mayo with pasture-raised eggs. Oh, dude, that's the best. If you want it to last more than five days, get pasteurized eggs. That's the way to go. Oh, uh, we got, the connection is horrible. Oh, Brazil, maybe. Flav City for president. <laughs> I love that, my man. Thank you so much. Yeah, I don't want. I'd rather just like hang out in the kitchen with you guys as opposed to being in charge of the free world like 
Nah, I'm good. So that's it. No stress on that job, right? Yeah, right. I think my job is stressful and a lot of work. I don't know. So if you weren't talking and hanging out with my 425, what's the record? 470. Ooh, we're getting close. Okay. Uh, what's the serving size for this recipe? Um, so basically, I don't tell you actual grams of serving size. I give you the total quantity and you divide by five. It's more of a visual thing. It's super, super easy. Thank you, Sexy Sky Doll. Just order the book, three copies for the family. Woo Tajim, woo! Thank you, homie. I appreciate that. New shirt, Okito Key. Okay. Oh, I like that, Kukamango. That's good. Was never a big cook. Started to love cook because of you. Oh, thank you, Helen. Where do you buy pasteurized eggs? Whole foods sell them. Uh, yeah, you, can find you can't find pasteurized, pasteurized eggs, but pasteurized eggs are available everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, Jasmine wants to know if we have steak recipes. Check it out, Art. So, we have a whole chapter called Beef, Raising the Steaks. We have, look at this, breakfast, wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Pasta la vista, baby. Pork, your one-stop shop. We got it all. And like I said earlier, each recipe has a photo. Wow, look how good that is. Each recipe has detailed macros. Spaghetti, squash, pesto, spice-crusted shrimp. Each recipe has tips. Tip, make your life easier. You can buy cauliflower and broccoli rice from the store. Buy the pre-grated one, not the frozen one. I'll let you know if there's a video for it. This is a one-pan coconut curry and veggie rice. This is my chicken salad on low-carb cloud bread. So we made this book really accessible so you guys can use the recipes. Jose Silva asks if the next live stream you can show how to break down a cauliflower. Uh, yeah, I usually do that and then people get bored, but I did it earlier before we started. But yeah, I will do that. Is there a keto tortilla wrap recipe in your book? That one we don't have. That's really, really difficult and we haven't cracked the code on that one yet. Let's check these chicken art. I don't think they're ready to flip yet. Usually when the juices start to pool on the top, they're ready. But let's just take a peek and double check. Yeah, they're not ready yet. They're sticking a little bit. Just let them do their thing. If they start to stick and stuff, just let it be, right? Let it be, let it be. Let it be, let it be. Exactly. In the meantime, we're going to do the usual question and answer during eating. So I'm going to get a couple of plates ready for my man Arturo and I. So yeah, the book will start shipping next week, a week from today. But if Amazon gets it in their warehouse before that, which knock on wood they will, you'll get it sooner. I need you guys to do a big favor, please. As soon as you get your book, leave a review on Amazon. Amazon loves reviews. And the more reviews we get, the more their algorithm goes crazy and starts pushing our book to everyone else searching for low carb keto recipes. So please leave an Amazon review on our page. Very, very important. Can you pre-order? Yep, Brittany, use my Amazon link in the description box right now or search Flav City on Amazon. So many of you guys have pre-ordered already. It's been a number one new release in detox and cleansing, low carb diets, allergies, and weight loss recipes for four, three to four weeks now. A number one new release for a book that hasn't come out yet, all because of you. So thank you so much for that. It's so cool. Of you, I, Dude, I always do that. How much is the Apple books going to be? I think it's going to be $9.99, my friend. The hard copy is $22.50. So $22.50 for 125 recipes with pictures, macros, and tips. I mean, come on. And this is why I put this on the cover. It's 125 plus low-carb recipes that actually taste good. The days of boring recipes, bland recipes. When you're on a diet, they're done. This book is going to shatter that stereotype like nobody's business. It's going to stomp it down, baby. That's right, Aaron. We got it right. Thank you, Sexy Sky Dollar. I think it's a great price for that many recipes. Total carbs are what's displayed in the U.S. net carbs. Total carbs minus fiber displayed in Europe. I do both. I have total and net carbs to hook all y'all up. All right, let's check our chicken. I can almost hear that it's ready to be flipped. Do you smell that, uh, that cinnamon? So that's what you want. You want the spices to adhere to the crust. Ideally, I would have got a better crust on there, but it's still pretty good. 
but I can smell the cloves and the cinnamon. It's lovely. Really, really tasty stuff. Reminder to share the video. Yes. If you haven't done so yet, share the video over to your friends, your Facebook, your Instagram. Our record is 470. If we could beat that, that'd be amazing. And set your reminder right now for tomorrow at 5 o'clock Chicago time, CTD. Uh, we're going live again. What is it? CD. CD. Ah, Chicago Daylight Savings. <laughs> Chicago time. We're going live at 5 o'clock. Okay. Central Daylight Central. Anything you recommend to gain weight. Yes, eat five meals a day and have two protein uh, supplements a day. Let me get this for you, Art. I drink this protein powder twice a day. It's organic, plant-based. Yes. Plant-based protein powder from Garden of Life. It's the cleanest protein powder you'll ever see. The ingredients are amazing. And I add a scoop of grass-fed collagen peptide powder to this with coconut milk, almond milk, reishi mushroom powder, um, half a frozen banana or frozen blueberries. It has like 600 calories. I do it twice a day. It makes me strong like bull, and I love it. This stuff is the bomb. It's the price of that. On Amazon, it's, it fluctuates between 30 and 36, but it's way cheaper than the grocery store, which is $50. Buy that. It's amazing. Can't, you can buy pasture eggs in Walmart. Uh, oh, good to know. Good to know. Can you come to our office in Oak Brook and cook for Oak Brook? Nice. I grew up in Highland Park. Uh, you never know. Shoot me an email. We'll see what happens. I don't do keto, but I'm so excited for your book. I've made a few of your recipes and they have been great. That's the beauty of the book. Even if you're not on the keto diet, so many of the recipes are paleo and Whole30 approved. Think of it as a clean eating Bible for losing weight. How to lose weight without sacrificing flavor and feeling like you're on a diet because you're going to eat recipes you love. I mean, every kind of recipe is in this book. I mean, if you can eat turkey meatloaf that has a sugar-free ketchup glaze and cauliflower rice pilaf, do you feel like you're on a diet? Do you feel like you're on a diet when you eat Mexican turkey meatballs with blistered shishito peppers and cabbage crunch slaw? You don't. Look at that. Three macros here. Macros for shishitos. Macros for salad macros for meatballs. You're not going to feel like you're dieting when you're eating the ultimate clean eating recipes. All right, I think this chicken is done, Art. I'm going to take it out. Now question, as soon as I get this out of the pan, Art, do I want to... Ah, ah, do I want to cut into it immediately while it's hot and those juices are really delicious? Or do I want to wait a few minutes? What do you guys think and why? And if you're wondering how I'm going to clean that cast iron pan, I let it cool down and then I put a little bit of water in there. I simmer that for five minutes and then I wipe it out with uh, hot water and a sponge, but no soap. So look at that. All right, look at the steam coming off of that. I wish you had smell of vision I blow that right into your nose. Amy, I blow, Sandra, I would, I, I would, we would share this with you right now if you were here, to be honest, because Desi's not home right now. And, uh, oh, speaking of Desi, we made this on YouTube earlier. The video's coming out next weekend. These, my friends, are Desi's gluten-free, dairy-free, chocolate date brownies. The only sweetener in here are dates. It's 100% gluten-free and dairy-free, and it's so tasty. Recipe next Saturday. So basically, there's been a ton of eating this afternoon. Yeah, there's been so much eating. We ate, wait, wait, we ate brownies. We ate pizza. We had leftover chicken, leftover meatballs. Leftover <laughs> hey, pizza. Leftover pizza. We're gluttons, but we love it. And, and now we're going to eat some chicken. And now we're going to eat chicken. But you know what? All of it has been paleo except for the cheese on the pizza, so I'm okay with it. Uh, yes, exactly, Vince. You want to let it rest because if I cut into these beautiful chicken thighs right now, friends of Instagram, friends of YouTube, the juices will run everywhere because inside the juices are 160 degrees. They will rush out like a freaking old faithful geyser right now if you cut into this. You could let these rest on your tin foil for 10 minutes. They would not get cold. You don't have to worry about that at all. Hashtag feed art, says Aaron. I love this hashtag. Wave City for president on Instagram. <laughs> for president. Hey, oh, integrity and karma. 
starting keto with my son tomorrow. Awesome. You guys need my cookbook. It will guide you, my friends. I promise you. I would never try to sell you something that I didn't truly believe in. And I've never tried to sell you guys anything before in my five years of doing this until this. This is something I really think will enrich the lives of anyone who touches it and will make you cook more and love the food you eat and feel good and lose weight and get off your diabetes medicine and not have as much arthritis and inflammation and stuff like that. This is what the book's all about. How do you season a cast iron skillet? The way you buy them now, they're pre-seasoned for you. It's just your job to keep it seasoned. So every five times after I cook it, I dry it out. I put it over medium heat. I set a timer for three minutes. I put a teaspoon of avocado oil. I rub it all around. I cook it for five minutes. I rub all that oil out. Do not leave any oil in there. Let it cool down. You just seasoned your cast iron. The pores opened and it seasoned it. Very lovely. Somebody asked the name of the book, so I'll show it. Keto Meal Prep by Flav City. Search on Amazon, Flav City, it pops up. Better yet, use my Amazon link in the description box. If you live abroad, just search Flav City because it ships to England, Australia, Singapore, Brazil, Deutschland, everywhere. Do you only use the cast iron pan for meat? Um, for the most part, yeah, I really do. So Dougie Doug, even if the cookbook sucks, which I obviously don't think it will, Bobby makes you buy it. He's a wonderful seller. That's why I want to get on um, QVC. Someone, if someone has a contact at QVC, let me know. I want to get on there so bad because I think we can sell so many books to so many people instead of the people peddling that crap that's normally on there. No, these are a brand new recipe, but they're not keto. That's why they're not in the book. Um, they're going to be on, they're on the website right now. If you search Flav City uh, Date Brownie, it's on the blog. The video is coming out next week. Um, let's cut up this chicken. All right, so check this out. We'll take our chicken. And I want to show you how juicy these chicken thighs are. They're still piping hot, but here's the beauty. You get that nice spice crust, but look, can you see that art? Look how juicy that dark meat is. This is why we use dark meat, not breasts. It's way more exciting than breasts. But you know what? As long as you follow the Flav City method for cooking chicken breast, it's going to come out fine too. How many uh, thighs do you want? One or one and a half art? One, one. One's fine for now? Okay, so let's do this. Let's build a plate by taking a healthy scoop of... S sexy Sky Doll threw out her uh, family member's old cast iron skillet. It was all rusty. Now she knew that she could have restored it. Yeah, you could have restored it. It's a pain in the ass to restore it because that's not the restoration technique. You have to sand it down. And well, then... Yeah, I mean, it, it could be fixed. Yeah, it could be I fixed, but... It never breaks. Yeah. But I'd rather just buy a new one for $39 on Amazon. Those memories with it being from her mom or... Oh, well, yeah, yeah. If it's her grandmama's... I don't, I don't know if her mom or grandma missed it. Yeah, you basically have to sand it down and then... Wash it. Wash it, bake it in the oven, put oil in there, and bake it five times. Like, you have to repeat the process. It's an all-day thing, but it's worth it. If it's grandma's, shoot, man, come on. Okay, so we put down a nice bed of this. Come on in here, Arturo. We'll take some chicken. We'll just layer that right on top. I'm gonna do that on the other one too. And then don't forget, we still got some garnishes here, my friend. We got some green onions. Then we got our black sesame seeds. And can I get some hearts? Can I get some thumbs up? Can you like the video for my Chinese five spice crusted chicken thighs with low carb fried cauliflower rice. Hearts rolling in now. Yeah, bro. One of over 125 low carb recipes from the cookbook that I cannot wait for you to get your hands on and start tagging me when you make these on social media. And I can't wait for other people who have never heard of Flav City before to get this book and be like, where have these recipes been my whole life? Now, Pardon Art, he's going to shake the camera, put it on a pedestal so he can join me here. We're going to do some eating, Q&A, and hanging out. Instagram, I think we'll, we'll just keep you up too if you want, if you don't mind. So let's do that, and then Art will join me for some food. Audio's, gonna Audio's out. Mm -hmm. We're going to use the mic right now.